let's get our dogs ready for the 4th of July or just looking like patriotic little pooches. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a dog leash using nylon webbing and fabric scraps. And I'm going to be using the three different star patterns that go with my July placemat pattern that I designed for Riley Blake Designs. So first let's look at really quickly what we need. One inch nylon webbing. I just got a big spool of it, but you can also buy this by the yard at most fabric stores. Thread, I usually match at least, I match the bobbin to the nylon, and then you can choose a different color top if you want, but I'm going to use red for both. Then this is optional, but highly, highly recommended. It's a bias tape maker. I got a set of four. It comes in four different sizes, but we're going to use this one, the number 18, and that is going to make the perfect fold and iron for one and a half inch strips of fabric. It saves you a lot of time, saves your fingers from a lot of steam. Then we're also going to be using ironing spray or starch, whatever, however you want to use it. Fabric, cutting mat, ruler, rotary cutter, and that's it. So first thing you need to decide is how long you want your leash to be. And if you have a dog, I would just measure your favorite leash and see how long that is and make it that long. Otherwise, a standard leash is about six feet long. A hiking or training leash, or for larger dogs, might be 10. An outdoor play, hiking, backyard, beach leash might be 15 feet. So totally up to you. We're going to go with six because I'm going to give this to my sister or my niece, and they have pretty small dogs, um, you know, that they're just walking around the neighborhood. I'm going to start by measuring out six feet of this nylon. I'm going to make this a scrappy leash. You could do, you know, one fabric that goes the whole length of it, but I want it to look a little bit more fun, so I'm going to alternate between the three different fabrics. We're going to cut any scraps that we have to one and a half inches wide. And the way we're going to sew these together is just like you would sew together binding. And I'll show you that when we get to the sewing machine. Be able to get a couple strips of this. Now, one thing I do recommend being careful of is if you're going to be using a light fabric like this white, I wouldn't put it on the handle because that's the part of your leash that's going to get the dirtiest and show dirt the most. So I would make sure you have a darker color up on the handle and right down at the bottom by your dog and maybe put the white kind of towards the middle. So we'll play with that when we are piecing it together. But right now I'm just getting some different pieces. I'm just going to cut this into some random sizes, just making sure that I'm doing it pretty straight. So a smaller piece. All right, so some pretty short ones, longer one. I'm quite sure that all of these pieces together are definitely going to be longer than six feet. Now, because I don't have a dog leash on me, I'm going to make this loop to try and figure out just how long that's going to be, because I want to make sure when I'm putting this together, I have a long enough section of the darker colors before I go to white. So that looks pretty good. I'll just measure that. So at least like 14 inches. Okay, so let's go to the sewing machine and we're going to piece all of this together. And then I will show you how to use this cool thing and get this done. We're going to sew these strips together like we're making binding, even though it is thinner. And if you're not familiar, I'm going to show you what that means. So we're going to take one right side up and then we're going to turn the other one upside down. So putting right sides together and then we're going to make them into a right angle here so that this edge is lined up along that side and this edge is lined up along that side. Then we're going to twist it and we are going to sew at a diagonal. Now, if you're new to this, you're going to grab a ruler and this is a chalk pencil or you can use um, a fabric pen that will disappear in heat and you're going to just draw that line so you know where to sew to make that edge. But once you do it a couple of times, you can just eyeball it. So once you do that, you'll see when you flip it like that, you get a nice angle and then it becomes a straight line. And then what you do is you can do this with your rotary cutter. It's so small. I just do it with my scissors right at the sewing machine. Cut that to about a quarter inch. And now we're just going to add piece to piece to piece. First, I'm going to make sure, yep, this is more than 14 inches, so I'm going to add a white piece. 
So the piece that you started with, I always had that one face up, moving to the left of my machine. And then I take my new piece and I put it face down, line those two edges up. And when you put white on top, you can actually see it. So it's even easier to do that diagonal without drawing it. But I'm just going to piece a bunch of these together. You can do six feet or more because we can also use these to do dog collars, but that will be a different tutorial. You really can't measure it until it's sewn together because if you were to just measure the individual pieces, you'll see you kind of lose part of about that much between, for every one that you put together. So just always make more than you need. Let's see what we got. Eight, like eight and a half feet. So we'll be able to decide which portion of this we want on our dog leash when we get it all set together. Okay, let us talk about our goal with this. This is going to be the base of our leash. And then the fabric is going to have the raw edges folded under perfectly, and it's going to get sewn down like that. We're going to use this, but before we use this, I'm going to show you your other option, which is not nearly as much fun, and you would have to do it wider if you want to do it this way. So the other option is kind of how I do key fobs, where you're going to iron it in half, open it up, and then iron. So that would work, but to go six feet or more in that method, ooh, you're going to have very, very burnt fingers and it's just tedious. So this is a great investment. Now what you do is you thread the fabric in here face down. So it kind of curves, see how it's curving? with the curve of the metal, like that. And then the set comes with this awl, little pointy thing I like to call it, to help push it through to get it out. And then you're gonna get it flat so those two edges are matched and you're just gonna iron. Now you can do it just like that, but I like to spray it with a little bit of this firm finish ironing spray because it helps it stay crisper and give it more shape for when we sew it onto the nylon. Ah, but I forgot one part first. Before we do that, we have to press these seams open where we joined everything together. Now, the spray stuff. Keep that away from heat, obviously. I'm just going to shake it. Just follow the directions. There's all different kinds you could use. This is what I happen to have. I'm going to shake it, and you're just going to kind of spray, and you don't want to get it too wet. Guide that through there. I just do this, and then I just move the iron as I slowly pull back. Look at how fast that works. You don't want to go too fast and you just want to make sure you're watching that those raw edges are kind of staying together so you get a consistent width to your final result. The trickiest parts are when you hit those, those seams. This part was starting to heat up a little bit, so I'm going to use the loop, which I think I'm supposed to use anyway, but... We do what feels right, right? Can you imagine how long this would take if you had ironed it in half, opened it up, and then ironed each edge in? Whew! So now it's ready. I um, singed the end, basically melted the nylon at the very end by just using this lighter and putting it just super fast along the edge. See how that kind of melts it. If you go too, too long, I don't know that it'll catch fire, but I wouldn't recommend it. Just do a teeny, teeny bit and that just seals that so it's not going to fray. And now we are going to sew our fabric right on top of there. Then we'll add the clip. 
I'm going to put a little tag in the handle part and it'll be all done. So back to the sewing machine. If you wanted to, you could clip this all along to keep it straight, but I find it's pretty easy to just do it as you're feeding it into the machine. So I don't do that step. You do want to turn under this raw edge at the very top and then when we cut it and do the bottom so that that doesn't fray. So I'm just going to turn that under and then I'm just going to sew six feet down one side, across, and six feet up the next side. So let's rock and roll. Okay, that took five minutes and 45 seconds to sew together. Now we're going to have this end, because it's got lots of dark, to be the handle. And the other end will have the hook. So for the handle, it's seven inches folded. So I folded basically seven inches down, 14 inches of it is the loop. Then if you have a little tag or anything you want to put in, I like to put it in here more because I do need I do need to do a box to keep this nice and secure. And I like to go in X. Alright, handle is done. Little tag is in there. We're gonna get to our other end and we're gonna take our one inch swivel hook. That's what's gonna hook onto the dog's collar. You're going to string that through and bring it out about an inch and a half. So this is about an inch and a half so that you can then again do like a little box, maybe a little bit less to make that nice and secure. You're done. You've basically decorated a nylon webbing leash with fabric, fun fabric strips that are going to alternate and your pooch is going to be very patriotic.